Okay, so this next video is all about the top five books I'd recommend you read to become a marine biologist. And most of them are right back here. Cool? Let's go have a little look in the library. You guys always see it in my videos, but I never actually like pull any books off of it, so let's look. Okay, so I've got some books for you. Ready? Okay, so there's actually a whole stack. Okay, okay, there's a lot. There's a lot here. There's too many. Okay, there's too many. Um, but I'll go through the, some highlights. Old biology textbook. Keep these around. Even if you are not in university yet, absolutely even see if you can go to the library and just take a look. Even just to stretch your brain and start thinking about what does a marine biology student have to think about? What are they learning about? Oh my goodness, like what are these diagrams and graphics? Honestly, taking a look at these books in advance of your marine biology degree, especially if you are thinking about going into one, it will help you understand like, do I like this idea? Is this of interest? Some of you might already be there ready to learn about uh, at a university level in, in high school. So go ahead and test it out. See how it goes. Seasick depressing book, but very important to understand the plight of the ocean and how can we be helping. This was an amazing book and I highly recommend it. Alana Mitchell is the author there. This is also written by a friend of mine, Andy Lamb, and Bernie Hamby is the photographer. This, if you live on the West Coast, uh, anywhere on the West Coast, from Alaska all the way down to California, this book is your guide to any animal that you might find on the beach or when you're scuba diving or when you're snorkeling. We call it the Green Bible because it's green and honestly it has everything that you need in it. I spend lots of time on the beach and there's lots of times where kids will come up to me and be like, well what is this thing? And I'm like, I have no idea, let's check the Green Bible. Because there's still so much diversity in the animals that show up on our shores. Specifically look at exactly what the animal looks like and, and then learn more about it. And because Andy's so funny, he writes these adorable little descriptions of some of them and he's very funny. So there's some really good little like golden nuggets in here around the descriptions of the animals that he uses. Honestly, I've never found an animal that's not in here that I've been, that I found along the beach or while scuba diving. It's worth getting, investing in this actual book. I actually bought this for my stepmother who started reading recently learned how to dive and I got her her own copy so that she herself could look these up, especially when she was on the boat without me. Learn about explorers. Robert Ballard. He is the gentleman who found the Titanic. He has an incredible oceanographic exploration history and he himself is still now running and operating something called a vessel called the Nautilus, which is a vessel that is using underwater remote remote operated vehicles, right, ROVs, to go down and explore. Again, for any of you who are like tech nerds or interested in the robot world, he is using the highest tech to go down to really deep depths and to be able to explore areas that we've never seen before. If you go to Nautilus Live and watch his website, him and his team are doing dives regularly and often to places that have never ever been explored. And there's incredible scientists and engineers there explaining what they're seeing as they're going. It is the coolest. Two more good ones. As much as I love reading, I much prefer audiobooks. Um, I'm a I'm a runner and so that's actually how I get my books in is by listening to audiobooks while I'm running. This one Light is water. whoopsies, don't turn it on though. The Ocean of Life is a really good one. I love this one. It is a full, complete history of the ocean world, of its plight, of the issues. It just gives you a nice overview of what's going on in the ocean world right now. Oh, this one. Uh, sea Lab is another good one. It's all about the history of diving. Oh, super cool from uh, from like military scuba divers and how they literally went down not knowing anything about dive tables and just saw like figured out if they died or not crazy and then all the way up to more much more technical diving very cool stuff and how ultimately humans were trying to live in the sea and Jacques Cousteau's underwater world very cool blue mind can you see that okay so blue mind is all about how when we're near water regardless of the, any body of water how it affects our brain how it has this like calming effect and this like cerebral effect takes place and the scientists actually looked into putting like nodes on people's heads and then have them go surfing or go scuba diving or go just stand by the ocean and see what happens in our neurons and our brain movements in order to determine how how our brain is affected by it. So cool. So two other great books that I don't have on my, on my shelf. I can't believe it. Sea Change and The World is Blue. Both of those books are written by my all-time favorite biologist and oceanographer. Her name is Sylvia Earle and she is the I like to call her the female Jacques Cousteau, but she's not. She's she's different and she's cooler, in my opinion. She has an incredible background in ocean science. She's actually a botanist to be by uh, by trade. She has her own organization called Mission Blue, which ultimately asks the world, pick out the best and most important places you think that 
that have the most diversity in them and that are places that we need to be protecting. And then she kind of designates them as a hope spot or a place where there is still hope. Even though the oceans, there's lots of issues with them, she is all about hope. Mission Blue is amazing, and Sylvia Earle as a scientist and as an author is worth following. I highly encourage you to see her film on Netflix called Mission Blue. Her TED Talk as well is just incredible, remarkable. She actually won the TED Prize, a million dollars, to put towards her Hope Spot mission. Check out some of these books. Go to the library, go to the bookstore, and that might be the, the trigger or the spark that gets you clearer and clearer on what kind of marine biologist you want to be. As I said, the field is enormous and there's so many options. So that's it for video number two, three. So that's it for video number three. If there are books that I missed that you really want to have included, make sure that you make a comment below. Tell me what book I'm missing. Dudes, get reading what or listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Video number four. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See you later. All right, are we still filming? Oh my God, we're still filming.